I used to work at BAA on the Heathrow Quad. Um, so really what I'm going to talk to you today about is my experience in, on the design and passenger experience of Heathrow Pod. Um, I left BAA about three years ago, but I've been still involved in uh, the Heathrow Pod for the last three years as a consultant under my company called Momat, so hence the, a little bit of confusion there. Um, what I want to try and do today is focus on the design aspect of the Heathrow Pod and share some of the learnings and the process that we went through as well as kind of start to set up some thinking around the fact that we're at the very beginning of hopefully a very exciting phase in terms of how there's some real life systems that have been launched. What does that mean going forward and what role design can play in that? Um, so kind of starting to think about that with kind of the idea of an inflection points and changes and especially listening to Fraser's uh, presentation this morning kind of got me thinking around where are we as an industry? And of course I'm a designer, so I apologize, I have used some Apple examples, but I've got some other examples. And just thinking about the PRT industry as compared to the PC industry, where are we on that kind of, on that curve? Um, in August, there was kind of a, an interesting moment in time where Apple, for a day, was the largest company in the world through stock value. And that kind of says a lot in terms of an industry that 30 years ago, was meeting in kind of places like this in Silicon Valley. So I started to think about what are those inflection points in the computer industry that maybe you can compare to what we we're going through. What I see here is 1998 was the kind of the first dedicated internet computer and that's kind of started a whole wave of computers thinking about using getting online using the, the internet. But actually I think I don't think we're even kind of at that point yet in terms of PRT. I think probably even further back in the sense of <coughs> Another kind of key inflection point in the curve of PCs were the GUI interfaces. The first time that mice were in introduced to computers, it moved people who were using computers, using DOS, typing in to a graphical user interface. And I kind of think, well, actually, even at that point, a lot of people were starting to buy computer. It was quite mass market. I think we're actually maybe even a little further back. Um, and before everyone jumps up at me, I'm not saying technology-wise PRT is anywhere near this, but I think it's an important point to think about what are the things in that curve for, PR, for PC that we can draw parallels from in terms of the PRT industry. Um, at this point, there was a small number of manufacturers. There were some guys doing software. There were some guys doing hardware. There were companies that were doing the whole experience, doing the software and the hardware together. There were small groups in Silicon Valley talking to each other, really interested in what, where PC could go. And there's even some kind of visionaries at that point envisioning a PC on everyone's desk and everyone's home. And everyone thought they were crazy, right? You're never going to have a PC in everybody's home. We're all here today envisioning a future 30 years from now, hopefully getting excited and thinking actually PRT can be that future in 30 years. So I think there are some interesting points. And if you track that kind of paths, design has played a very important role in terms of adoption of PCs over that period. And hopefully, as a designer, I'm here to kind of promote design as helping that adoption. And I'm the first one to admit is I recognize the technology, the business case, the government lobbying, all that is critical to the success of PRT. But I also think design has a large role to play in, in adoption of the technology. I think this was an interesting point. This is, a, again, another inflection point for Apple's history. It's when Steve Jobs came back. Um, it was at the point where he was introducing that first internet computer, and he was having some battles inside the company. And he basically had to say, it's, in this case, you have to start with what the customer wants. And I think we're, off, we're at that kind of turning point again. We've talked a lot about technology over the past, but we're starting to get some feedback in terms of what passengers really want and what are the applications and the places for PRT that actually really make sense so it can, it can shine versus places where it's not going to shine. So what the next little phase I'm going to talk about is how I think design, passenger experience can play into the overall solution. And again, I'm not standing here being naive enough to know that actually you have to get the technology right. It has to work reliably all the time. 
and you actually have to get the money and the business case and the stakeholders in place. But actually when you have all those three together, that's when you can hit the sweet spot and you can actually make things successful. So if I go back to what we did at Heathrow, we were lucky enough being on the client side as BAA, recognizing that the passenger experience was critical to the success of what we were doing. We went back to thinking about what is that passenger experience from start to finish. And as Mark was saying, it actually it starts before I even get to the system. What do I know about the system? How do I become aware of it? Am I gonna pay for it before I arrive? How do I find it? Once I, once I arrive at the system, what do I do? How do I board? How do I select my destination? right through to the other end, in our case at Heathrow, is how do we get people from the station up into departures so they can catch the plane. So really thinking about that whole journey from a customer's perspective, and then starting to work backwards and say, well, what does that mean from a technology, from a business perspective? So what we did is map that out, and we were lucky enough to be able to mock stuff up and test it and understand that before we actually built real things. Again, I know a subject close to Robert's heart is just a lot of what we're dealing with here is brand new. If you go ask a passenger what they want, they won't necessarily be able to tell you that they want a PRT system, but they will be able to articulate the needs that they have. I don't want to be sitting around waiting for a bus. I don't want to go through every single terminal to get to the place that I want to get to. I'm worried about sitting in a, park, a car park alone at night. So those are the types of things that when we talk to people we can understand and those needs then became some of the driving factors that influenced the design as we went through the process. And you'll see here kind of a mix. Some of them are what we talk about as benefits for PRT, less waiting, direct routes, but also some of them are kind of concerns that passengers have. I'm about to get on a whole new system. I need to be reassured that this thing is going to work. <laughs> I, I, it's all new, I'm scared of it. And we actually, we've seen that a little bit in terms of once it's la launched, but we've tried to mitigate that through design to try and address some of those things. So what I'm gonna do is talk through some of these examples and the things that we came up against and how we tried to address and solve them and also how they worked in, in reality. So the first thing is kind of the direct route. Um, as a benefit, it is great, right? In terms of I'm, in our, in our case, it's going back to the car park. I don't have to go through all the stations in the car park. I can go directly to the station that's closest to my car. Sounds fantastic. And the way that we do that, very simply, there's a destination panel that I select before I get into the vehicle. I select the station I'm going to, and I can get there. And again, it's a, at this point, it's a small system, so it's relatively easy. I have a choice of two stations, so it's not too complex. But you can see in the future, this could raise some issues, right? Um, we've seen a little bit in terms of where did I park my car. And it's actually one of the cases where a bus is pretty good. I just get on the bus and I just kind of sit on the bus and go around the car park till I see my car. In a PRT system, you actually have to know where your car is parked to be able to get on it and proceed. So it's just understanding that something that is a benefit can actually become a potential issue going forward as a system expands. Um, and same with no stopping along the way. In our particular system, you select the destination before you get in the vehicle, so you've kind of committed. There's no stopping and asking the bus driver to say, I want to go somewhere else. You've got to go. Um, so again, it's just recognizing it is a benefit, but, but it comes, when you look at it from a pure passenger's perspective, there's other things to consider when you're designing and implementing that. And as you make those decisions through that process, it starts to drive a lot of decisions. Where do your stations position? How many stations do you need? Um, what, where are the interfaces? How do you present that interfaces in a, in a meaningful way? How do I recover from situations where people have selected the wrong destination? I can easily change my destination, whether that's in the vehicle or get out again. Again, less waiting, as you saw from, from Fraser's presentation this morning. Kind of we're down in seconds, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, there was lots of thinking and lots of worrying about what happens in busy times. In Heathrow, we've got a call forward system that tried to guide people to the right berth. Even if there wasn't a vehicle there, it would drive them to the right berth. In reality, what we're finding is people sharing a lot more than we anticipated, which is great from a <coughs> performance perspective. Um, but there are built into the system 
some things to try and mitigate that. In our case, we kind of tried to anticipate and we have a mode, a busy mode that we can actually put messages in place to encourage people to share. We don't need this, but that was kind of thought as a, a way to mitigate that. And also kind of in the phase two is looking at giving people information to tell them when the next pod would arrive. Like on the London Underground, you've got a one minute coming, two minute coming. It's things like that, just reassure passengers in that case, I know I'm waiting, but I know when the next vehicle is going to arrive. And again, I reassure so. And again, these are all the things that drive all those very complicated com conversations about numbers of vehicles, number of stations, headways. And I understand that, and those have huge business and design impact. But actually, coming straight from the passengers, those can actually start to balance those, and you can start to have some some decent conversations about the trade-offs you need to make through that, through that process. This is where I'm going to get a little bit fluffy. Um, and again, I know I'm, I'm talking to a lot of technical people, but actually, you have to remember you're putting something brand new in front of people. They've never seen one of these things before. It's not a lift. It's not a train. I've got to do things that I'm not used to. And we spent quite a bit of time trying to think about how to kind of mitigate that or understand how to make that as easy as possible in terms of the language we use, what, how you talk about these things, um, how you present the interface, even the voice that we've used on the voiceover to try and reassure people. Mm -hmm. um, those are all things that are done to try and make this as familiar as possible. And I think there's even opportunities um, to not reinvent the wheel unless you have to, right? The buttons that we use are standard buttons that you see on trains. There's familiarity there. Everyone's seen a touch screen. It's, quite, it's, it's purposely looking like a bank machine. So it's trying to understand and reassure people where you can. Obviously, it's going to be different. We're expecting different behaviors, but actually there's ways to actually make that as reassuring as you can through the architecture, through the experience. And our experience is that it's worked. People, it's intuitive enough. People know what to do. They approach the right things in the right times, and kind of we've guided them through that process. And again, finally, in terms of Safety, and when I mean safety, I, obviously there's all the technical safety, it's got to work, they can't crash into each other and all that stuff. But also, from our perspective, we actually got a, initially a lot of feedback from people saying, listen, I'm worried about being in a car park late at night alone on a PRT. Um, and that came up over and over again. Um, so there's lots of work been done around lighting, about reassurance in terms of help buttons, reassurance, telling people that they are on CCTV, if they need help, people will intervene. So I think it's that side of things where initially it sounds like a benefit. I'm alone, it's a small vehicle, there's no other people, but actually if you get stuck in a small vehicle with a person you don't want to be with, that can be an issue for people. So it's just understanding that and recognizing that. So we did things in terms of on purpose, where buttons were positioned, the type of materials we used to try and reassure people, the type of lighting we used to address that issue. And comfort. And again, this is quite a subjective one in terms of what are you comparing it to. And I think one of the, the issues and challenges we've discovered is when you compare it to a bus, it's great, right? It's a much better experience. But all of a sudden, you've raised the bar. You've created these great looking pods with great interiors. They're quiet. So all of a sudden, people's expectations are we've moved now into the, the car design area. So I'm expecting it to be as smooth as a car and as fit, the fit and finish to be the same of a car. So in a way, we've kind of created our own problem, but actually it's a, probably a good problem to have in terms of people's expectations are much higher when you've presented them in this kind of environment. Uh, and again, all that drives a lot of thinking behind what's the track design, what's the, the the interface between the track and the suspension, what's the seats, all those things play a role, and there's lots of tweaking to be done to actually optimize that. And there's a lot of work been done at Heathrow to actually optimize that experience. So finally, and I won't go into a lot of depth because that Fraser can address, address this in terms of there has been quite a lot of feedback, most of it's positive. Um, if you dig a little deeper, there's some interesting things in there in terms of the one that I like is uh, I'm expecting to see Johnny, Ca Johnny Cab from Total Recall, which is the automatic cab driver in the movie. And again, you've kind of raised the people's expectations here. They're kind of, they think they're in science fiction. 
So you actually have to kind of manage that. In a way, it's a good thing, but it's just recognizing that. So finally, if we kind of make a big circle, I think we're actually at a really exciting time. We've got systems up and running. We are at kind of an inflection point. I don't think well, how, how much we inflect in terms of how fast it goes, is, I know, is up for debate. But I actually think we're at, at a very interesting time in terms of there's lots of effort being put into the three systems that are in place to address these design issues. Um, there is an opportunity to kind of keep that momentum up in terms of the passenger first. Um, and I also think there's a real opportunity to actually move from something which is innovative and new to everybody to it actually just becoming the norm. Um, and we're actually starting to see that at Heathrow already with the regular passengers. They just don't think about it. They expect to show up and have a, a, a vehicle there. And so that kind of that transition is actually happening and can happen pretty quickly. So my hope is if we can sort out the design side, we can sort out the other side and actually make this adoption as quick as we can. So I've just given my five minutes, so that's me. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to recognize that it, I was involved on the design side, but it was a large team of people that delivered the whole thing. I'm very proud to be part of that project.